Welcome to westernslopenow.com. Meteorologist Russ Pappas here. Uh, what we're looking at is the hazardous weather page. And what you can't see, actually, let me see if I can get you to see this. Can you see my mouse there? So what you see to our north, uh, that's actually uh, wind-related hazards. So that's a high wind watch. That's Sunday. And that coincides with our incoming storm system for the beginning of next week. So by default, because this system is moving through from the Pacific Northwest, this is something I'll be talking about, I anticipate um, breezy conditions late Sunday and into Monday. Uh, we're one state removed to the south of that high wind warning, high wind watch, but that still doesn't mean we cannot be breezy, which I feel like we will. That's part of the forecast. We're gonna put wind. We're gonna introduce wind back into the forecast because wind always leads the way into our incoming storm systems, which we should have two of next weekend, or I should say next week, the beginning of and the end of. Speaking of end of, this is how we finished our Friday, December the 3rd. Temperatures in the middle 50s, upper 50s for a few spots, even a 60 degree reading. So as my recollection tells me, a lot more areas were supposed to hit the 60 degree mark today and that just didn't happen, but it still felt pretty good considering our average high temperatures were around 43 degrees. Top wind gusts of the day, same 10 to 15 mile per hour wind profile. Nothing has changed and it won't change until late this weekend when that storm system approaches from the Pacific Northwest. It's actually a two tier system. Pacific Northwest cold front, which will deliver cold air, but also help energize the atmosphere. That'll be the lifting mechanism, the front itself. And that'll also kick the winds into gear. It'll follow with colder air. But our moisture region, the source region for that is Southern California. That's a cutoff low pressure system. That's gonna be influential in getting rain and snow to the valley floors and snow to the mountain elevations. So I'm still holding steady with my thoughts. Winter weather advisory for the area mountains. Uh, the window is Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, but I really feel like that winter weather advisory could kick in early Tuesday morning and last through Wednesday morning or some form of late Monday through Wednesday. But I'm still earmarking those days for a winter weather advisory. That means five to 15 inches of snow and we'll see deeper totals and we'll get whiteout conditions with the wind and the blowing snow in those elevations. And that's to start the work week. More on that in a second. Uh, once we get into Saturday morning, we'll see these temperatures similar, mid twenties going across the board for the Highway 50 corridor 10 around the Gunnison Valley, another chilly start there and then lower twenties for the Roaring Fork Valley. So uh, not much has changed with our temperatures. Not much has changed with the forecast. Saturday's gonna be like Friday's gonna be like Thursday was. Tomorrow afternoon, same deal with the temperature run, um, though there's a little bit more of an influence of the cooler air. So given the history and the track history of some of these forecasting numbers and the models we've been using or selecting, um, these numbers you see here probably will go a little bit cooler because we'll have a northerly influence. And of course, all that activity is to our north. None of that activity is in our state right now, and we're gonna go through a mostly clear, totally clear night, and we're gonna go through a mostly clear Saturday. We'll start to see some thin high clouds move through, uh, maybe some wind, but I'm really holding out until Sunday for the wind. And there goes that cold front. Sunday morning, it advances in, probably very breezy across the western slope Sunday afternoon. Behind that front Sunday, we should get cooler temperatures. Now, that in and of itself could be enough to kick in a little bit of light snow showers Sunday morning, but there's just not a whole lot of good moisture source. Uh, what we are looking for is two things. We're looking for a cutoff low pressure system in Southern California to feed moisture into. And the other thing we're looking at is this. And you can see our system interpreting only so much, only so far in the longitudes and latitudes, but this is the incoming system for next week. It's the cutoff, it's the actual low pressure system with a cold front, and that's gonna sweep into the Pacific Northwest and sweep across Colorado, um, creating unsettled conditions to start the work week, colder temperatures for the midweek, and then late next week, we have another cold front swinging through, and that has a lot more presentable snow forecast opportunities. You look at how we end up with the next week, how it finishes, cold temperatures and snow in the forecast. So. That should be a pretty good indication that the winter, or I should say the mountain zones, will be picking up a lot more snow. And if you remember, I said, let's start the work week with a winter weather advisory. Let's finish the work week up next with winter storm watches, winter storm warnings. And when you see the forecast at these elevations, Grand Junction at 55 approximate, Montrose at 65 approximate, we still hold on to rain and a rain snow mix Monday into Tuesday, but we also see snow opportunities late next week. 
that could be measurable or it could just be grassy surfaces. Either way, next week represents a significant pattern change, something more akin to what December should be. And that's going to prove to be very beneficial for our mountain snowpack.